Hey again, welcome to another video on channel and yeah, it happens. Today we talk about proxying in Nux.js, how to set up a proxy to your backend API the right way, what other options are there and why they're not feasible. Let's start. All right, after recently discussing Nuxt and Nitro and how they work together, if you don't know yet, the video is linked somewhere there, I guess, and also in the description. We now talk about our first deep dive there and it comes to proxying routes. So very common scenario, right? You have some kind of backend API. You want to avoid all the core hassle and just want to proxy it to something like slash API. And well, let's say that way there was a long discussion. Um, there is this wonderful GitHub discussion in the Next repository that was created more than two years ago and it got over 26 comments and 64 replies uh, somewhere there down also mine from the 8th of november 2022 here with an update originally on may and with that video we finally give this thing the final update and describe how we successfully can proxy urls because there are lots of options here and some of them are outdated some of them never worked so let's let's have a look at how we do it and to do that, I've once again created a little demo application that just fetches a very simple API route. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that this is proxied to our API somewhere out there. Let's take a look. As I said, the app is really simple. We have a next config that's empty. We have an app.view that just fetches API users. And our goal is that this here should be proxied. And this should be proxied to like some placeholder API that we will take a look at it in a second and eventually it should render the data and then it should also render um, a link to the endpoint if we want to click on it and see if the proxying actually works so let's start the app and uh, have a look what the browser says right now when we just launch it like that and when we have a look in our application we see some html coming back which is because well we only have our one and only uh, app.view here so every single route is rendered through the app.view unless configured otherwise so if we click on the link well we land once again here okay so what we want to do and i mentioned that before we want to proxy it to an api which will be the json placeholder typical api and for example get users so our api users endpoint should render eventually the json that you've just seen but before we dive into all the examples I've prepared, let's set up a very simple goal. We say that the whole thing should be proxied. What, what does it mean? Well, first of all, the proxy, the URL slash API slash users should return a JSON on the client side. That's the first thing. Like when we access it directly, it should work. When fetched on the client side, it should work. Okay. Number two, it should also work during server-side rendering. This is very important because as we'll see, sub approaches will not work with that. And as a little bonus, but also very important for bigger projects, we want to change the URL that we proxy to through end variables, so through our runtime config. Because if you have a bigger Nuxt application, think of like e-commerce and say, oh yeah, I want to change it depending on my like staging, QA, tests, or live environment, or just saying, okay, look, we have uh, different systems, different load balancing, and so on and so on. And you want to change that without rebuilding the application again and again. So these are the goals. And let's see how the approaches will fit into that and which approaches will satisfy all the goals. Hint, there's just one. But anyway, let's uh, take a look. The first approach we could take is uh, the Vite config. So if we use Vite's server option in here, we could define a proxy. and this is one of the things that came up in the discussion. And uh, actually, yeah, we, we could try it out. Let's say we proxy API here to a target of our URL, right? Of the placeholder API URL. We want to enforce that the origin will be changed. And also we want to do a rewrite because we want to change that the path, let's uh, make it a function here. The path um, will omit that, uh, API here because otherwise that API will always be appended to the URL but we don't want that uh, in our case so let's just uh, give a little regex here 
to say, let's replace uh, the start with API with nothing. So we just remove that and we save it. And here we go. Let's do one more thing to check in our app.view. view. As I mentioned before, the first criterion is let's make sure that it works on the client side. So this is server false. And now we can have a look in the to the browser and see what's happening. And it looks great. So it looks like we get the data. We can refresh that once again. Yeah, that looks like the JSON from before, like not when there was no request going on or like the request straight away to our next application. And if you click on the endpoint, that also works. It's nicely proxied. Okay, first criterion, check. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to change the server mode from false to true. So if we go back to the code here and say server true, or uh, we could also just remove the whole thing because server true is default. Uh, and now go back to the browser and do reload. We will see, ah, that's a problem. That didn't take that long last time, right? Yeah, we can wait a little bit and wait a little bit and the result will be simple. There will be a timeout or the socket will hang up. Why is that? Well, Veed's server proxy is not meant to proxy on the server side. It's meant as the dev server proxy. And that will not work with SSR in mind. So Veed as the first approach works if you have no server side rendering, doesn't work on SSR, and we also can't really configure it with runtime config, right? You could use like process.env, but as I mentioned before with runtime config and env variables, we want to reduce the amount of process.env in our Nuxt config to only the part where the runtime config isn't even there. You don't necessarily need it. If you didn't know about that, once again, a uh, link to the video is up there with the most common mistake I've seen when using runtime config. Anyway. Short excursive to that. Let's do a very simple thing. Let's restart the dev server real quick so it's uh, not hanging up anymore. And then we'll remove the code for the, the Veed server and try another thing to do. Okay, while the Veed part didn't work that much, let's try Nitro's very own dev proxy. And yes, Nitro has a dev proxy as well. So we can say Nitro dev proxy here. And now we can say, okay, slash API, we know the drill. Uh, in this case, we want to set a target. We want to set the target once again to what we had in here before. So the URL for the API. And we also want to say change origin, very important. Now there is no like read write option here. So we don't have that compared to the Veed server and we save that. We restore in here the server false because we start with our first criterion again. And then let's have a look in the browser and see what's happening. Okay, no surprise, it once again works. So similar to the Veed result, this happens and works fine. And if we go to the endpoint, that's also okay. But now the big challenge, does that also work with SSR true? Or like server true for the use fetch call? And if we reload, yeah, I changed it behind the scenes now real quick. If we reload it, we see a very similar result. There is a kind of not infinite, will just take a while, loading. But why is that, right? We, we've said that Nux and Nitro go like hand in hand, playing very nicely, but now the dev proxy doesn't work during SSR. Well, yeah, because there is a kind of sophisticated improvement that causes these side effects, unfortunately. So what's happening when you use dollar fetch or use fetch or dollar fetch wherever, but use fetch also uses under hood and you call your own internal API routes, then you don't do the request, you straight away emulate it. And that means that the proxy can't be triggered because, well, we, we don't use like an absolute URL, right? We use a relative URL. So Nitro thinks, okay, it's an internal call. We can just skip it and run the function, but there's nothing to run here. There's no API endpoint we've defined. So uh, unfortunately, this goes around the dev proxy because we don't actually do the call. This is very helpful and saves a bit of time when calling internal API routes, but in this case, uh, it's not beneficial. But no worries. There is an even better integration than the dev proxy because also the dev proxy, well, we have it under Nitro object, 
and oh it's uh helpful especially when using nitro directly but in our case with nuxt and nitro no so we go back to another approach instead of keeping that dev proxy code here we move on to a better way because also here our dev proxy it worked on client side but didn't work on server side so it doesn't fulfill all the criteria we we created but we stay in the nitro cosmos because one thing we had is route rules so if we add route rules here and actually we can move that out of the nitro object because it's also a global alias but it would be the same we can define a proxy route rule so let's take api here and now we take the proxy route rule okay and the only thing we do is we say all right let's take that url straight away move it there and we're good to go the only thing we have to add is we make sure to do this for all um the sub urls of api and also here we want to ensure that we map that straight away so if we save this as is and go back to browser let's see what's happening here and uh, what the result will be and no surprise once again we have the data that's great it's still the same i can refresh that um, and the endpoint also works that's also awesome but the one thing we're missing is the SSR test. So now what we can do again is we could say, okay, let's go back to the app and check it out. But if you see here, haha, clever trick, I didn't even change it. So if we go back to the browser and we actually investigate if the content is server rendered, which we can do by view page source, we see the data is actually in here. It works. That was never the case before. Before it was always only rendered on the client. And here we see, awesome, great. That proxy works as it should. It works on the client side, it works during SSR. What else do we need? And the answer to what else we need is the runtime config, the end variable. So let's see if we can do this with the proxy option here. So if we go back here, we could replace that URL with, I don't know, let's say process.env.whatever URL here. But as I mentioned before, this is not the way. Please don't, don't do this because this will not work during runtime. This will only be set on build time as I explained in the runtime config video as well. This applies here too. So what can we actually do if we want to use some kind of runtime config here? We can't call use runtime config because we're in the next config, no composables will work here. So how to solve this? And the answer is not through the route rules. The route rules, well, we can't use runtime uh, values straight away in here. It also has to be all serializable, right? So that's not the way to go if we also need the proxying um, URL to be set during runtime. If we always have a static URL, that's perfectly fine. That's the way to go. But we have to get to the final level the final solution when it comes to proxies and Nuxt, if we want to have all the criteria fulfilled. And this is using Nitro directly. So we have this wonderful server folder here, and in here we create a new API and uh, then a catch-all route. So after that, we will see, okay, let's add um, here an event handler declaration, or just let's do a Nitro event handler with define event handler, little script, uh, or like a little template I added, or snippet it's called, I think, in Navi's code. So we have that here. And what are we going to do here now? Well, first, we get the runtime config proxy URL. Second is uh, check the path. Third would be proxy it. Okay. Let's define the runtime config proxy URL first. For that, we go back to the Nuxt config. Being in the Nuxt config now, we will create our runtime config um, through the same named key and object. And in here, we create something like my proxy URL, and we could leave the default empty and just let the end variable decide, or just add a default as our URL, which is easier for now. And as you already know, that you can override that thing with an end variable, right? Right? If you if we save this. Uh, and uh, checked it out. Like everything in runtime config is fully overridable. And you see it here, you can override with Nuxt my proxy URL. 
If you're not aware of that, once again, link to the videos about runtime config in the description. Okay, now that we have it, we need to get the values. So now we use use runtime config here. And now you wonder like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Alex, you said uh, in a video recently, don't use any view composables in here. We, we don't want to use like use fetch or something like this here either, uh, which is correct. We also see like, okay, um, use runtime config is one of the few exceptions because use runtime config is not only view composable, it is also implemented in Nitro itself. So when you use Nitro standalone, then use runtime config is also a thing and you can use it. This might be a bit confusing at first because here you don't import the view in Nux composable. You actually just use a Nitro function that's just very conveniently named the same way. So you know it's for the same use case. And in here, of course, we can say, let's get the proxy URL. So let's do that. Get it. Perfect. And the next thing we want to do is we have this event here, right? We have to check the path and do what we did in the beginning with the Vite server when it comes to read writing. So let's say const path is we take the path, the event, and then we want to replace the API part because that should not land in the eventual proxy URL, right? So let's do that. Let's replace API with nothing. And then we get the proper path. So something like slash API users should be to merge to users. And now we can get both together and say const target is now we can call join URL from UFO, which we'll import in a second, either automatically or because I didn't define it uh, in my package JSON here, but it's still there because it's also used through Nitro under the hood. We can import it and it will work. But of course, it's better practice to put that in your package JSON as well for um, dependency management. And here we put in the proxy URL and the path. Uh, so they're joined together and it doesn't matter if there's like a training slash left or not. UFO, UFO will, will handle that for us. That's perfect. And last but not least, we want to proxy things. So to proxy that, we just say return. So we return a response here, which will be proxy, proxy request. And proxy request takes the event, which is just the actual A3 event here, and the target, and then we're good to go. If you wonder, wh where does that come from? Where can I find that? Well, proxy request is one of the composables or like helpers um, from H3. So the framework that Nitro is based on. So H3 basically exposes lots of helpers and you can find all of them in the documentation in uh, the JS docs. Let's check it out in the browser real quick. So in here you find all the helpers, what they do. And for example, also here you have like proxy request. We also have get proxy request header, which won't help that much. And here we have proxy request. Most of them are documented pretty well, and some of them might not be. That's also nice to do for me, just write up straight away. And I hope when the video is up, you already have that documented and looks better. But also a new documentation for H3 is in the making by Puya that will bring even more joy to that. But yeah, they are all auto imported, which is great. So if we go back here, we see you don't have to do any imports. That would just work out of the box. And we take the event, we take the target, and we proxy it. So let's get back to the browser and see how that will eventually work out. And here we are. And the amazing part, once again, this works totally fine. If we check the page source, we're still good on the server side. And now we could even build it. And if we change the end variable to another API, to another server, to another URL, it's fine. It will work. So what does it mean? What is the conclusion here? In theory, there are lots of different approaches that have been accumulated in that long, big GitHub discussion over the years of how to proxy things correctly. But in my opinion, there are only two valid solutions nowadays. The first one is using the proxy route rules. That's perfect if you have a static URL that will never change at least not a runtime, right? So that's totally fine. Then you can put it in there and you're good. But as soon as you have the requirement that you have to change the URL for an end variable and runtime, the most feasible way is setting up that Nitro API endpoint 
and proxying the request with the proxy request a3 method. And here we go. We have a working application. I'll uh, have as usual the code down below as a link with all the previous solutions and why they didn't work that well. We'll comment it all in and upload it after the video. So you have it already. And the only thing left to say is don't be afraid of using Nitro and A3 to your liking. This is all intended. I hope now you can also proxy your URLs. You don't have nightmares about, oh, I can't change that. It doesn't work on runtime. Why? Don't forget to check out all the other videos. Drop all the questions left in the comments. I'm very curious if that helped you, if you had issues with that. Let me know and see you in the next video. Happy hacking. Bye-bye.